Bill Hobby to be chair. Is there a second? Yeah, I'd second that. And uh, Phil, uh, as long as Phil's okay with that, you know, I think it's um, it's good that we have kind of experienced folks leading the group since there's so many new people at the table. Uh, thank you for asking, Jim. Yes, I, <laughs> I, I do accept that nomination. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 So unanimous. Thank you. And then I'll turn it over. And then, and in turn, I would like to nominate Mary for the position of vice chair. And I'd be happy to second that as well. And yes, uh, thanks for the nomination. I would be uh, pleased to serve. Should probably no. just call no. for just. <laughs> In between, uh, in between the nominations and the votes, um, if there's any discussion on it. I like no discussion. <laughs> Bill, I think you can call for a vote. Oh, have we transitioned? <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> okay. Um, then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any no's and no abstentions? Congratulations, Mary. Um, there's one more position, uh, and I'm. this is going to need a little discussion on our part. Um, uh, Mandy and, and Clyde, um, we uh, put in to the town budget a small amount to hire a recorder for our select board meetings, and that was included in this year's budget, this coming year's budget. Um, so that starts uh, obviously um, in July. So in the meantime, um, I think we need to do two things. I think we do need a clerk regardless of what happens in July. Um, and for now, Mary has um, volunteered to do the recording for tonight and maybe ongoing meetings till July. So we need nominations um, for uh, the position of clerk on the select board. Well, isn't, I have a question for you, Phil. I think the recorder is a different position than the clerk. Um, I was clerk a number of years ago, and that was dealt with responding to correspondence. I don't think a recorder is a an officer. No, I, I agree. Um, it would be a paid position and just would work for the board. Um, but the three positions, as I understand it, are chair, vice chair, and clerk. Okay, so you're saying the clerk is a different position than the recorder. Correct. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And I don't know if um, I didn't have time to research whether or not if we have a recorder, do we still need a, the position of a clerk? I assume we do, but it's an assumption. Yeah, I think we do. Okay. Well, so. <laughs> I'll make a, I'll, make, I'll nominate Jim uh, to be the um, to be the clerk. I have no idea if he'd like to do that or not. You're on mute, Jim. Maybe that's on purpose. I'm, I'm happy to do it unless somebody else is uh, interested in the role. I do have a little bit of a challenge writing because I've got a, a hand issue. Well, you know it. Uh, just speaking from experience, there was virtually never anything to do. So, <laughs> so. Okay. not to worry. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, any seconds for that? I'll second that. Thank you, Clyde. Um, all in favor of Jim becoming clerk? Aye. 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 Great. So I think we have our three officers. Um, our newspaper record, I believe, is the Valley News. I'm not sure if there's another paper. Okay. 
Uh, so we'll continue with the Valley News. Uh, meeting day and time. Uh, I don't want to mess with history here. Um, Bill, can you, Phil, can you, uh, you need to make, can you make a motion on that uh, newspaper of record? I'll move that the Valley News be the paper of record. I'll second it. Uh, all in favor of the Valley News being the paper of record for Heartland? Aye. 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 Great. It's passed. Okay. Uh, meeting day and time. Um, we have the first and third Mondays of the month, which has been the tradition at 530. Um, when that Monday is a national holiday, we meet on the following day. Um, so I guess, Dave, do we need a motion for that or do we can we just go forward with that? A uh, motion would be motion on all these would be best if you could please. Okay. Uh, I just make a motion that we continue to meet on the first and third Mondays of the month at 5 30 in Lester as a holiday. We'll meet a day later. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, all in favor of the meeting time and place, say aye. 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 And any abstentions? I'll abstain. Okay. Okay. Any nays? I don't think there's any nays. I think I saw the four. four. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, meeting format. Um, I was having some um, discussions on this because I really don't fully understand um, a true uh, having a meeting and voting by a true consensus versus a majority. Um, I my interpretation of that is that we strive for consensus and we have a discussion. Uh, either too much or you're breaking up, Phil. Um, are there any other ideas? <laughs> Phil, you gotta you gotta rewind yourself. You got uh, you must have that dial-up connection or something. You, you're uh, you're freezing up on us. <laughs> oh. Um. I, I don't know what's going on. If my internet connection had it, or less came down. Um, so we're talking. Oh, we just lost Jim. Um, the uh, uh, just. Sorry, just for clarity, should a, I have a discussion on a topic? We start... okay, yeah, Phil, you're still fading in and out. Uh, Phil, is there, uh, Phil, you may want to um, do what you usually do. Do you need maybe to reboot? Um, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> and also, what helps is if everybody uh, mutes who's not speaking. And then, Mary, am I supposed to be taking notes for this meeting or? No, no, no. That's That was what we were talking about, the, the difference between a recorder and a clerk. So okay. I'm, taking the, I'm taking the minutes. Okay, great. Yeah, great. you're off the hook, Jim. You're the best.
Wayne, we can, I can barely hear you. Um, what was the question? So, yeah, it's a little, a little confusing, but right above the word agenda is board organization, uh, where it says elect officers, newspaper of record, meeting day and time. We're on the, we're on the meeting format. Yes, since it's a new. So right above all of that. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. As a new select board, they need to tackle these items before they can really kind of move into the next phase of the meeting, that's all. Okay, yep, thank you, Quinn. Hope we didn't lose Phil. There's a long ways out there to the Brothers Road, so maybe it is. I understand the wind was kicking up a little bit. Uh, here he comes. Okay. What's better, Phil? I'm, yeah, I'm back. And you, am I unfrozen? Okay. Um, meeting format, take three. Um, in years past, the select board has met and made decisions by consensus. My understanding of consensus is that we attempt to show unity by a thorough discussion, uh, attempt to understand why some people are for or against, and we all move toward uh, a common decision. It's not to say that someone can uh, disagree but that we attempt to do it in a civil and an informed way. Um, so I'm not sure what words we would say other than meeting format. Um, in addition, I did some research today and um, I would like in an upcoming meeting to present to you, my fellow board members, a, um, a set of procedures for us to conduct our meeting. I feel uh, that, um, and I would, the ideas would come from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They have such a document. Uh, it's short and it's sweet. Um, and then we could put it on our website. So for tonight though, I think I would just like to decide if folks are comfortable with a consensus type meeting that we would strive for consensus and use majority of uh, voting techniques when needed. I think that's fine with me. I think in most cases we're going to have consensus. There might be a few controversial issues here and there that we have to debate and vote on. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts? Well, there there are some times that I guess it would be good if we were on the record for how we felt on an issue. So. Very much so, Clyde. I agree with you on that part. <coughs> uh, Mary, any thoughts? Uh, well, I, th I feel that this is how we've been conducting ourselves. Okay. So. Great. And Mandy, any thoughts? Of, uh... Oh, I think that that sounds per perfectly reasonable. Okay, great. Okay, then uh, assuming we made motions for the other, I would entertain a motion that our meeting format be, um, be one of consensus and that we uh, ultimately vote by majority should w when and if that is needed. I'll make that motion. 
<coughs> I'll, I'll second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Any aye. nays? Okay, thank you, Clyde. Okay, I think we have organized ourselves. Um, welcome again to Clyde and Mandy um, and Jim. You're a veteran now of five meetings, four meetings, but that, welcome to you as well. So thank you. Okay. Um, on to the regular part of the agenda. Um, let's do the orders first. Um, and then we'll do, do the minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve. Um, Mandy, the orders, uh, which should have been included in your packet are um, essentially um, um, the checks written by the town finance department for various accounts payable pieces. Um, and I guess I would first entertain a motion to accept the uh, the accounts payable up to uh, today, March 7th. So move. Okay. Any seconds? I'll second it. Okay, great. Uh, any discussion? I think I, I think I have one question if it's not too late. The seven thousand for expense reappraisal is that the fog expense? Yes, it oh, is. It's actually, sorry, I see it over the left now. Yeah. Never mind. Right, uh, that was my only question as well. Is that uh, uh, I recall that's half the payment. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we've had a motion to uh, accept the minutes. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, let's go on to uh, the first set of minutes, which are uh, from the February 21st meeting. Um, do we have a motion to accept those minutes before discussion? Yeah, I, I read through them and I, uh, you know, I didn't see anything in there that looked um, incorrect. So yeah, I make a motion to accept February 7th. Okay. Meeting minutes. A second. Uh, Mary, second it, thank you. Um, okay. Um, so Phil, I just want to, uh, you're just about at discussion point here. So uh, as you, you did have one correspondence in your packet uh, and generally correspondence um, does come to me and I'll put it in your packets. I got one late Friday afternoon, uh, so it didn't make your packets, uh, but it pertains to the minutes uh, of February 21st. Uh, this is from Gary Trachier um, in, uh, you know, he is, uh, basically communicating about a prior or, or an agenda item on the February 21st meeting, which was the Dan Gottsagen uh, agenda item, the ditching on Garvin Hill Road. Uh, he points out that uh, Dan Gottsagen had requested that the town rebuild the stone wall. Uh, he noticed that that was not in the minutes. So he requested that that request that Dan Gottsagen had made to the board be added to the minutes, um, felt as though there was an omission there. Um, so Dave, it's the request to add um, his email or letter to you as to be part of the February 21st <coughs> minutes? Uh, Gary Trachier, no, he, he's requesting that you add uh, Dan, uh, Dan Gottsagen's request that the stone wall be rebuilt into the minutes of February 21st. Oh, oops, uh, can you, yeah, you guys can hear me. I'm, I'm trying to think back to that meeting and my recollection was that Dan was gonna provide a copy of his uh, statements for us to review. 
that, that was my understanding as well. I think he, did we get it or not? So, I mean, but there were an awful lot of statements during that, you know, discussion that he made. And, you know, I think we're focusing on one, right? But what I think we really should do is just get his written statement. But if, you know, Dave, if you disagree, please, you know. So, Jim, just for the record, uh, a packet had been sent out to the select board back in like October, September of 2021 that this is referring to. Right. Um, so. But, but he said he was gonna provide a written copy of the statement that he made during the meeting. Right. <clears throat> I haven't received anything from Mr. Gottsagan um, since the, um, you know, other than his communication to be a part of the meeting from uh, February 21st. Uh, I suspect Jim, if the select board would like a copy of the letter that he had submitted back in September. Um, that's fine. We can resubmit that to the board if you like. I, I don't think we need to resubmit anything that we already had. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we may just want to reach out to him to see if he wants to submit a copy of the statement. Um, if we need to amend the minutes, we can, right? But, you know, there's certainly not a lot of things in his statement that aren't verbatim in the minutes. So I'm not sure if we need to, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know, do we need to amend it for one, one request that wasn't made by Dan? Yeah, Jim, you bring up a good point because there were a number of um, suggestions that were made during that right. evening for how the process could be uh, potentially better. Uh, and there was a good faith, I thought a good faith effort on, this, on the Gossian's part, got seconds part to, to, to bring that forward. Um, so, uh, so Gary, I believe his intent is to just make sure that the, he's keeping the board on our toes. Is that, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, it, you, I guess that's the way I would like to read it. Um, you know, are so, we, Dave? Did, excuse me, Phil. This is a question for Dave. Are we obliged to change or amend the minutes based on uh, a citizen's request? I mean, it. I've never heard of this before. It's and maybe it's legit, but it's always been if the select board members found an error or an omission, then it was up to us to make those changes, corrections. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but I think the minutes might, if we read it right now, just kind of, Dan read a letter explaining that they hope sharing their experience will help avoid problems, right? That's kind of the first section of his statement, uh, you know, with future projects and requesting specific mitigation. So, I mean, I think the, the summary is there. He requested specific mitigation. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure the minutes, you know, I think the minutes do reflect that. You know, without then, going into the detail of everything that he requested. Right, because then, I mean, anybody could read the minutes and say, well, I don't like this or I don't like that and change this. Or, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the way minutes are supposed to uh, work. Oh, so. I agree with you, Mary. They are the board's minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if it was like at town meeting, you know, when we were and they brought up that there was an error in the clerk's minutes, they could amend it then because you have, mm -hmm. you're accepting them. Mm -hmm. But the public is not accepting our minutes. Right. Right. Good. Yeah. I think that just that just doesn't make sense to me that it would. Yeah, this doesn't make sense. Okay, and uh, Mandy, for your purpose, um, this is an issue that's been going on for a number of months right now. Um, the select board entered into executive session um, as the nature of the discussion was both legal as well as contained negotiations, um, which is the purpose of an executive session. Uh, we've had communications going to the Gottsagans, excuse me, uh, 
Um, and this discussion is really just about the minutes right now. So. Thank you. Okay. It is our choice, as, as, as Clyde said, they are the board minutes to uh, either amend them or not, but it sure it sounds like there's no real precedent to do that. Um, so we can duly note the correspondence, but, uh, but not necessarily as part of the official minutes, if that's what I'm hearing the group wants, would like to do. Yeah, I think Phil, it's fine to <clears throat> recognize the correspondence, but I think again, the minutes, the phrase requesting specific mitigation kind of covers that correspondence. Okay. Uh, Dave, I think I can just go forward and ask for a vote on the, uh, we have the motion on the floor to accept the minutes of February 21st. Do we have to uh, officially acknowledge uh, Gary's correspondence with you? I think if Mary were to acknowledge that, um, you know, Gary had, had, you know, requested that, I think that uh, if that's acknowledged in the minutes, I think that that's sufficient. Okay, great. Um, Thank you. Bill, what I wrote down is uh, Dave Orbison noted that Gary Trotter submitted a letter noting that uh, Dave Gossigan's request requested a stone wall be rebuilt into the minutes of February 21st. Something to, I didn't write that perfectly, but that's the gist of it. So okay. is that all right with you? That's fine by me. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's move forward then. All in favor of the February 21st minutes, say aye. Aye. Um, yes, and, I better abstain because I wasn't. Yeah, there, there wasn't so. there. I just <laughs> told me fine. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, okay, then we have minutes from the informational meeting on February the 23rd. Um, First, I would entertain a motion to accept them and look for a second, and then we can have a discussion if there is one. I'll make, I'll make the motion to accept the February 23rd time informational meeting minutes. Thanks, Jim. Is there a second? Well, I can second it. Yes. Great. Okay, any discussion? Uh, hearing none, then I would ask for a vote. All in favor of accepting the February 23rd minutes, please say aye. 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 And, and, uh, great. Um, motion passes. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? I have none. Um, Under correspondence, I believe we can talk about um, the piece that's in our packet, which also has gotten a little Upper Valley um, news release. Um, any other thoughts that we need to adjust the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I would uh, open it up to public comments. Um, if you would like to make a comment and you're out there watching, um, please use the, the raise your hand icon and um, our CATV technician will sort of recognize you and turn on your video. Um, right now, I don't see any um, from the six attendees. Okay, hearing or not seeing any raised hands, um, let's go on to new business. Um, uh, the first item is the 911 or the 911 um, 
designations. I was calling them redesignations. Um, but uh, Dave, I don't know if this is something you're going to introduce and then turn to Sean um, or, or Sean going to run, run with this. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce it, Phil. Uh, so <clears throat> as you know, we did bring Sean on uh, at the beginning of <clears throat> in the fall. Good part of his work effort is concentrating at the moment on the 911 numbering, uh, getting caught up on some things. Um, as you can see in the handout, there is roughly seven to eight um, new private roads that we need to um, confirm or approve for, for Sean. And um, also in the packet was some supporting information as to why we need to make these changes. Um, you know, if you have three houses on a driveway, um, you know, we need to make that into a private drive. Uh, we need to kind of reconfigure the numbering a little bit to kind of lose some of the A's and B's and um, some other things. Uh, oddly enough, Sean's been working on this for a good number of um you know, almost since November anyways, uh, particularly on a lot of these roads that you see in front of us. And um, the, the state is just really slow in responding to um, our requests, but they finally got to it. And um, so what you see is what is being proposed. And um, I will open it up to Sean. Sean, if you'd like to just kind of um, explain what you've put together here and, um, and what we're asking for, that would be fantastic. Quinn, if you could, uh, Sean McGran again, if you could allow him to speak, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? You need to turn it up a little bit, Sean. Can you guys hear me now? Is it? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> Okay, so hi, I'm Sean uh, McGranigan. I'm the uh, Ordinance Administrator and E911 Coordinator in Heartland. Um, so I'm here today to ask for select board approval for the creation of eight um, new private roads. Um, so in the Vermont um, E911 board addressing standards, um, it states that um, a shared drive of any length having three or more addresses on it shall be defined as a private road. Um, so because of this, um, eight driveways in town need to become private roads. Um, these driveways include the driveway for 60, 62, 64, and 66 Chute Road, um, which is proposed to become Dairy Lane. Um, the driveway for 83, 85, and 85A Chute Road, which is um, proposed to become Tilly's Way. Um, the driveway for 89, 91, 93, and another unaddressed house on Chute Road, um, which is proposed to become Manny's Way. Um, the driveway for 96, 98, and 98A Chute Road, um, which will become Frisian Way. Um, the fifth um, one is the driveway for 113, 115, and 117 Chute Road, um, which is proposed to become Whitcomb Galloway. Um, the sixth is the driveway for 13, 15, and 17 Gilson Road, um, which is proposed to become Riverview uh, Lane. Uh, the seventh is the driveway for 28, 30, and 32 Grout Road, um, which is proposed to become Long Winter Drive. Um, and the eighth is the driveway for 343, 345, 347, um, 349, and 351 US Route 5, um, which is proposed to become Henry Road. So um, along with the creation of the new roads, the addresses of the, um, the, addresses of the homes along these roads were also changed. Um, so addresses were assigned um, following the 5.28 foot standard um, as a standard is required um, for any new road being addressed in the state. Um, and then in the packet, there's a list of all the addresses. Um, I also sent letters to all the residents letting them know about the meeting tonight. And I've talked to residents about the readdressing. Um, so the state has given preliminary approval for the new road names and the new addresses, but um, now there needs to be, I need to send a written document to the state um, with select board signatures, letting them know that the select board approves of the new road names. And then I'll send that back to the state. And then it, if, if you were to sign off on the approved, the new roads, then once the state gets that, then they will be officially uh, created. So that is pretty much uh, what I'm here for tonight. 
Sean, can you just explain how you came up with the road names themselves? Yeah, so I went out um, to each of the driveways, um, proposed roads, and talked to residents. Um, so most of them were consensus among all the residents. Um, the ones where I didn't hear back from the residents or they didn't give me a recommendation, it was the recommendation from the residents I did hear back from on that road. Um, so for example, Henry Road, um, I talked to three different residents. One gave me a recommendation. I left um, notes for the other residents, but I only heard back from the one. So I went with their recommendation on that example. But like Long Winter Drive, that was a, all three residents on the road agreed on that one together. Jim, you have a question. Yeah, just a, just a, first a timing question, Sean. Um, like when, when did you, roughly when did you meet with the residents? And I guess also what was their disposition? disposition? Were they kind of upset by the changes or okay with it? Um, so I started with the sh five uh, private driveways on private roads on Shoot Road. And I started that back in October, I believe, um, then sent that to the state, didn't hear back. So then I started on the next three, which is the Gilson, Grout, and US-5. Okay. Um, and then I also sent that to the state. Um, so the residents, pretty much most of the residents were understanding of the change. Um, a few of the residents um, mentioned that they'd been approached before about um, the changes, but that they never went, uh, never happened. At, for some reason, um, okay. but so so not a lot of pushback. Um, I, there was one resident on Hen on proposed Henry Road who was unhappy, um, but her husband said he understood. Um, but it was a husband and wife, and the husband said that he understood, but the wife was. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. So, Sean, I I have some questions, but. Um, before I dive into them, they're, they're on the second document that you gave to us, that's more of the background and how you're uh, going about your work. Uh, but I, I, are you asking us for a motion or is this something that we need to come into the office to Damon Hall uh, to sign a document? Um, so it would be something that would need to be signed off on so I can uh, send it to the state. So they have okay. proof that it was approved. Okay, so we don't have a, a sample of that document, but if... Sorry, Phil, you don't, but it, it looks almost identical to the what you have in front of you. Okay. Uh, with an exception that there'll be five lines with you know your names on for you to sign. So it's really not too much of a difference. Sean okay. and I talked about that today and... Um, um, wasn't aware when I sent out the packet that you needed to sign it, but um, it looks very, very much like the document that you see in front of you, um, but you'll need, there'll be a place for you to sign at the bottom. Okay, well, that was my next question and make sure that Mandy understood. Um, would that be left up in the finance office and we just walked in and Okay, we can even but use I, our pens. Um, I so. do need a motion from you, though, to uh, approve of the changes as presented um, would be beneficial as well. Okay. Um, would someone entertain a motion to accept Sean's letter as the background for the 911 changes? I'll move that we accept this uh, list of proposed name changes and numbering. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mandy. Um, any further discussion on on this particular part of the document? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like it's unanimous. <laughs> Sean, uh, I guess two things. One, um, I, I've been asked by some town citizens that they don't understand how their nine, current 911 number is being changed when they have, um, haven't done anything in their homes. And 
in, in a particular case, it sounds like they have a separate, another structure on the property um, that I couldn't identify when I drove by it as whether it was just a garage or storage area. But I'm wondering if you could um, give us some feedback as to the, the nature of your work in redoing numbers across town. Yeah, so um, for the addressing, um, E901 addressing, there's a um, website called Geolinks, which is through the state of Vermont. And it kind of shows a map of all the E911 addresses in town. And there's a layer on there called the special comments layer. So under the special comments layer, um, it identifies there's all these state identified addressing issues in town. So um, like, for example, there's um, certain areas that should become private roads. Um, there's some addresses that are out of order. So um, say it's like 10, 20, and then like 15, 25. So that address would need to, need to be changed. Um, there's some addresses that have um, odd even parity issues where it's an odd address on the even side of the road. So the state requests that I change those. So to do that, I generally will go out to the property, um, measure what the correct address is, and then um, enter the change to the state. And then also send out letters to residents, um, first responders, um, also the post office um, notifying them of the address change. And then there's, a, for example, like with a, adding an address for an additional house. So the state, um, each like occupied structure is supposed to have its own E911, E911 address. So um, an example on Queen Pot Road, there are three structures. Um, one's a garage that's not human occupied and two are houses. So there's only one address for the property it was 41, which is an incorrect address anyway. So that one had to be changed to 61 because it was out of order. And then the other address was assigned 63 um, because since they're two separate dwellings, um, they need separate addresses. Like for example, there's a fire, they know like that they're two separate houses so they don't spend time trying to find one house, um, finding find out which house to go into if there's only one address for two separate houses. Okay. Um... In the document, it talks about the, um, the locatable address. Address should consist of a number, a street name, and a and location information. I can you give me an example of what that is? Do we use that in Heartland, or is that something that's used in more larger areas? Uh, the location information. Yeah. So that just means like what? So different areas of Heartland have different. Um, fall under different response um, zones for um, E911. So the, for, for example, on Shoot Road, they'll, their first responders is um, Heartland Fire Department, um, but there's other areas of town that's Woodstock um, Fire Department is their response. Okay. So that's no, kind that of the location. Okay. Yes. Sure, sure. And then this is just one, I'm just curious. Um, last fall when I was riding my bike and we were, discussing the need to change this. I noticed in Woodstock that we're using a decimal number. So it might be 220.1 or 0.2. Is that something um, that we'll be doing or and does that help us in any way short of, I mean, I can imagine it's a nuisance if someone's full US mail address needs to change and they have to chase it down in so many different places. Um, so the state, um, that is not allowed anymore. Do, uh, either decimal point addresses, hyphen addresses, or like um, say an A and B address um, are no longer allowed. They were allowed previously and they're grandfathered in. So, um, but it's not something, but also it's identified, like I can see Woodstock's what their issues are and that's identified as something that they want Woodstock to fix is the decimal addresses. Okay, great. Oh, thank you. Any other questions for Sean as, as we try to wrap our hands around what this is and how it's affecting town? Great. Sean, thanks for your work. Uh, uh, this is something that's been on the list for a while. So uh, we're, we're glad that you're tackling it and, and the building ordinances as well. Thank you guys for um, okay. approving it and appreciate it. And uh, we'll be ready tomorrow morning after 10 or something like that? 
So you, have, you can come in um, after nine o'clock uh, to the um, finance office. You can come in tomorrow or Wednesday uh, at the latest. Uh, so we can kind of get that sent out. That would be awesome. You can say hi to Michelle and Martin. Um, be glad to, they'll be glad to see you. So, yeah. Great. Okay. Um, okay, going on, uh, the next new business item is the Certificate of Compliance State Road and Bridge Standards. Uh, Dave, I think this is yours. <clears throat> Yep. And before I move on, I just want to, so uh, he does have other 911 stuff in the pipeline and, and things on that list for him to address. So we'll be seeing um, over the course of, you know, a couple of months as we move along here, uh, Sean will be coming back into a couple more 911 changes for you. Great. Uh, road and bridge state. So the next two items are really administrative in, in nature. Um, you know, every year uh, B-Trans asks us for this stuff. Uh, I've even been told on the road and bridge standards, it's actually a certificate of compliance. Um, I've been told that it used to be every five years, you kind of renewed this, but towns would kind of forget that they sign it or misplace it or whatever. So this B-Trans came up with the certificate. So every year this comes back in front of you uh, is kind of a reminder that, um, you have signed on to these bridge, road and bridge standards in that you're essentially uh, re-upping for another year. You're basically acknowledging that uh, you are going to uh, abide by the road and bridge standards. Uh, so two things, and you've got uh, the bridge standards that we signed, I think it was in 2019. Uh, this was kind of a new um, uh, format. Well, with the state of Vermont, we signed it in 2019. Uh, we've signed it in 2020 and 2021. Uh, it really serves two purposes. One is um, basically we're, we, we tell the state that, yes, we are going to buy by the standards, uh, road and bridge standards that you have put forth. Uh, they are good road. Uh, they are good standards, and we do try and abide by them today. Doesn't mean that we go out in one year and try and change, you know, Heartland's roads over to the new standards um, overnight. But as we do new projects, uh, we do try and bring those up to up to grade. Um, you know that, particularly with with culvert replacements and um, you know guardrails and and repaving, we try and we try and do that. Uh, so in and of themselves, they are. Excellent guides and um, you know good good standards, and I think that every town should abide by them. Uh, on the flip side, uh, there is kind of a carrot for us to sign this, and that is through uh, if there is a FEMA event in town, uh, you need to have the bridge standard, road and bridge standards in place. Um, it is helpful uh, also um, to use the road and bridges standards, for instance. Uh, the Mace Hill culvert that we replaced, I don't think it was last year, I think it was the year before, um, FEMA really kind of bought, even though the, the culvert was taken out in a storm event, um, you know, they had issues with a complete replacement. Um, they didn't think it was, you know, fell within the FEMA funding. Uh, however, we were able to show them uh, through the help of B Trans District 4 out of White River Junction that, you know, it is in order to upgrade that culvert, it needed to be brought up to current standards, um, which is essentially the box culvert that we have there today. Uh, the fact that we had signed on to these uh, standards uh, and it needed to be upsized to that culvert, FEMA did pay for that. Uh, so I don't think that that would have occurred if we didn't have the road and bridge standards. So it's kind of a two-edged sword, um, I think, for the, for the good. Um, they're good standards and something we should abide by, but it's also very helpful uh, when it comes to a FEMA storm event that we have these in place. Um, much easier to get through the process, and they're much more willing to reimburse uh, through the grant process. So I'm looking for um, you guys to 
uh, make a motion to um, adopt uh, the certificate of compliance, I think is what it is. Uh, and I can leave this out for you guys to sign. Uh, um, otherwise I can sign it, but uh, since you need to come in anyways, I'll, I'll leave it out for the board to sign and make it worth your while to come in. I just got a couple of dumb questions. Um, do we meet the standards today? What's that? Do we actually meet the standards? So again, Jim, it, it, it depends on the, the area of, you know, roadway. Um, you know, if you were to look at parts of Clay Hill Road, absolutely not. We don't meet those standards. But um, if we were to repave um, Clay Hill Road, there's that part that we should bring up to standard. So the old wooden guardrails that are falling apart, unstrung and, you know, but, knocked but over. The, does, the, yeah, sorry to, does the certificate imply that we meet the standards for new projects or that we meet the standards on all roads? What is, what's the implication? So Jim, it means that as you do the work going forward, you will bring that aspect of what you're working on right. up to up the to, standard. To so standard. again, if we keep it simple and we're just simply, you know, <laughs> replacing a culvert, uh, there's a place on here, um, you know, the town road and Bryn standards talks about intermittent stream crossings and how to size the culvert with the, with the water crossing that you size it appropriately. And, um, you know, you, you do that instead of just throwing a 15 inch culvert back in or whatever you upsize it to maybe it needs to be 24 or 36, depending on how wide that stream is. Okay. And, and do we have an up-to-date, I think we do, because I think we signed this recently, an up-to-date highway network inventory? Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah, Jim, that was done by Two Rivers. Um, and they then <clears throat> further uh, created the the inventory of the hydraulically connected um, road sections that, and, and a detailed wrote about what that work needed to be. So, uh, okay. so thanks to our original commission, we have that information. Okay. And if I, in reading the FAQs that, that were in here, um, they, um, they do imply that if we updated a culvert today exactly like it was and it was undersized and there was a, uh, a weather event, uh, FEMA would not honor that any of that cost because of we, we failed to comply with the needed change. Um, so I'm pretty sure I understand that from, from the document um, on that part. Dave, so the, the town road and bridge standards um, that's dated uh, 2019 is really just a reference document for us today to, that goes along with that. Yeah. Right. So I, you know, particularly with Clyde and um, Mandy coming on board, even with Jim, uh, who hasn't seen this, you know, it's great to have the certificate of compliance, you know, have you re up that, but I want to make sure you are aware of, you know, what you originally signed in 2019, what the road bridge standards actually are, why we, why we even mess with it. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a historical perspective as to what we were kind of dealing with here. And I don't have the uh, data on the tip of my tongue when the roads committee was formed and produced the report, but I do know that the report used these documents as the basis for our plan to go forward, uh, creating budget items for in the years ahead. I, yeah, partially, yes, correct. I'd like that partially, Dave. I, we, yeah. Okay, so again, do we need a motion or do we, our signatures are really the motion, I assume? Uh, I'd like you to, uh, no, I'd like you to make a motion uh, and, um, you know, um, basically a, uh, let me take a look at this real quick.
All right, I think you should adopt the certificate of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory for 2022. Okay, does anyone want to mimic that motion? I'll move that we adopt the certificate of compliance. Great, is there a second? I'll second it. Great. Any additional questions, discussion? I don't want to drag this on too long. <coughs> Just kind of reading through things. Is there any risk in these standards that we run into another situation like we did on Garvin Hill? Uh, I guess I'm not clear, Jim, as to what went wrong on Garvin Hill, to tell you the truth. Um, the state of Vermont asked us to um, ditch and you know without getting too much into it so um standards in in garvin hill um I, I don't think you're fully informed jim and i think you should maybe that conversation should happen at a later time sorry i was muted um and i we are governed by state statutes, even though we've had policies that may be kicking around for a while. Um, I think, uh, Jim, you pointed out it might, might be a good time to dust off those policies to make sure they reflect the state standards, which is what we must apply those standards to our, our work. Um, I think I'm speaking correctly, Dave, as, as far as um, um, what we can do and what we can't do. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else, Jim? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor of accepting the motion for the certificate of compliance and so on, say aye. 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 It's all five of us. <coughs> thank you. We are on a roll. Um, the next new business item is um, something which I am not even familiar with, a TA60 annual financial plan for fiscal year 23 town highways. Um, Dave, I assume that's you. So yes, and again, this is extremely administrative in nature. Um, you basically, um, the vouching that um, what our town spending is. Um, this is our budget minus um, the equipment fund. So we put 100 in, I can't remember the exact amount, 160, 170 into an equipment reserve fund. Uh, reserve fund money is not part of the, the TA60. Um, so that's backed out of this. Uh, and you've got some uh, grants and aid revenue and grants and aid expenditures that are kind of broken out here as well. Uh, the gist of the T860 is simply to um, show the state you gotta you gotta basically spend a real base minimum amount of money uh, in order to get the state funding um, for town highways. Uh, we do that. Uh, and that's what you're basically stating here. They take the number and they see that you're, you're spending that amount of money. But they also look at this in a secondary way in which um, um, when they have basically an emergency grant available. So if um, you know, a storm came through tomorrow and knocked out some things, it wasn't a FEMA event, but it may be um, you know, a storm event that caused us enough damage. Um, they look at your budget and I can't remember whether it's the damage has to be 40 or 60% of your budget, but um, they look at your budget and your spending and determine um, you know, whether you're eligible for that emergency funding or not. And uh, so that's kind of a secondary use of this. Uh, so looking for you to basically uh, 
you know, approve the TA-60 as presented, and um, this will get sent into, you know, the Trans District 4, uh, and they'll keep it on file there as well. Um, Dave, why is there um, a, a difference in the income versus the expenses for the Vermont grants and aid? One would think that we're spending only what, what came in as far as grant money is concerned. So there's always a, well, not always, but um, with a lot of the Vermont VTrans grants, there's a, um, a 10 or a 20% match. Uh, this is a 20% match. So um, they don't cover the entire amount. Um, they cover 80% of it and town picks up the rest. So if a project is $21,875, they'll pay 80%. Um, which is the 17,500. And oh. then the town is responsible for the remaining 20%. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, so I assume we need a motion to accept the annual financial plan for town highways and for that Vermont statute number. Does anyone like to entertain a motion? All right, well, I'm just trying to understand the motion. Um, it's, I mean, we just basically have to sign the TA-60, right? So we have to make a motion that we approve it. And oh, I, I, it, Kim, I'm sorry. I didn't see the uh, signature area on the back backside. Um, um, so, cut. Jim and Phil, yes, I would recommend, I ask that you also make the motion and approve it for the minutes as well. Okay. But, but the motion, like, uh, sorry, Dave, I don't wanna be remedial. We're just um, stating that we're spending at least $300 a mile on our roads, right? Yep, but I would like a motion and acceptance of it for the, for the record so that- We're spending a lot more than that though, right? Uh, you're only spending more than that because it's going in a reserve fund for the equipment fund. Uh, I don't have that exact dollar amount on me uh, off the top of my head, but that's been backed out. Yeah, so, we, yeah we, have, we have, looks like we have about 70, 80, 86, 87 miles a ton of road. Something like that, 75 miles. Of so it's class right. two and class three, you know. Yeah. So three hundred dollars a mile, it's like twenty-two thousand bucks, and our budget is way beyond that. Right? So, so yeah. So I'm asking you to state that for the minutes that that's what you know we're we're spending you know, to approve the TA-60 so that we can, you can sign it and send it in. So I make a motion that we um, approve the TA-60, which is an annual financial plan for our town highways that states we're spending at least $300 per mile of our roads. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Clyde. <clears throat> um, Mary, do you have that? Yep. Um, all in favor of the motion to accept mm -hmm. the annual financial plan for the town highways? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. So we're going to get a writer's cramp tomorrow. Sorry, Jim. So we're all going to get writer's cramp tomorrow when we come in to sign these things. <laughs> all right, speech, speech recognition a number of times, and my diction is so poor that it, it results in some pretty interesting results. <laughs>
Bill, you're muted. I dare not repeat what I said. Um, we are on to uh, the manager's notes. Uh, a couple of big things here. So COVID-19, um, you may be familiar, both the CDC and the state of Vermont has um, changed their recommendations since the last time we met. Uh, CDC changed theirs. They basically have categorized counties as to high, medium, or low COVID spread. Um, medium and low, um, they recommend you're okay going maskless. Uh, if you're in a medium county, um, if you have an immune deficiency or um, you know, you're prone to being sick, you should still wear a mask. Uh, but for general public buildings, et cetera, uh, the recommendation has been basically removed at this point by the CDC. The state of Vermont decided um, that they are uh, removing the recommendation as of March 14th. Uh, the mask recommendation on March 14th will no longer be in place for public buildings. Uh, they didn't really want to mess with the high, medium, low. So there's a little bit of discrepancy between the state of Vermont and the CDC. But um, in either situation, uh, the recommendation is at this point that um, public buildings can be maskless. So as of March 14th, I didn't put this in my update to you, but um, we are going to follow uh, a week from today uh, in the public buildings, we are going to um, do away with the mask recommendation in the town buildings. I believe that the public, uh, the library will still continue to recommend or wear masks uh, in, for the foreseeable future uh, based upon the library board. But we will change um, if for whatever reason we were to revert back to a uh, high category, then obviously we would reconsider and, and um, perhaps um, go back to uh, mass in the public buildings. But I don't see us flip-flopping every other month, uh, week. Um, you know, it would need to be, it looks as though we're going to be in the high category for a little bit, uh, then we would go back to wearing masks but as of March 14th, that is going to be no longer. Um, so if you come into Damon Hall to sign your uh, certificates or whatever you need to sign, uh, masks will not be uh, necessary, and, but that's next week. As far as our meetings go, um, in the public, uh, in your town manager's notes, I hinted that April was going to be the time that we come back for um meetings here in Damon Hall. Due to a little snafu, it looks as though it's going to be our next meeting, March 21st. So we do have a public hearing for the Rec Center uh, ADA access. We are um, trying to obtain a grant for that. As part of the grant process, we need to have a public hearing. Uh, it may only be a couple minutes long, but nevertheless, we need to have it. Uh, they put that warning in the newspaper, but they did not give a link um, uh, or even hint that um, we could, you could, uh, we were going to be remote or even a hybrid. So uh, we can do a hybrid, but we do or will most likely be meeting in person March 21st, which is our next meeting. Um, also know that mass mandates will not be in place. Three Corners Intersection that it continues to very much move forward. Uh, we are hopefully expecting to go out to bid next week if everything continues to fall into place. Uh, we are continuing to look at uh, GPI as our inspection services uh, for our inspection services engineering. Uh, and we will have a uh, concrete proposal for them uh, by March 18th or before. Um, so that does continue to move forward. Uh, hey, on, on the three corners, um, are there any updates on our bond appli appli application? So uh, the bond occurred on uh, February 24th. 
uh, I believe. So uh, that bonding occurred. Um, so we had that special meeting, I think it was like February 10th. Uh, we needed to have that information into them. The actual bonding occurred on the 24th and that money is held essentially in escrow uh, in US Bank. And um, you know that will be available um, you know, as soon as the project begins. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, yep. Um, highway department, uh, we posted roads today, probably more than a couple days too late, could have done that middle of the last week, but um, you know, we held off a little bit. Uh, very nice day on Saturday, although it was up into the 50s. Kind of a warm day today, a whole lot of rain. Uh, I understand that the roads are holding together. Uh, certainly there's probably a fair amount of uh, frost still in the roads, but um, as we move forward, uh, depending on how the weather goes, I expect uh, to see those kind of unravel. So we are moving into mud season here uh, and those have been posted um, both on the roads and um, uh, on the website and um, at the three locations in town. Uh, as I kind of put out to you um, after our last meeting, uh, we did receive uh, some very good recommendations on Brian Fogg, um, Clyde and, and Mandy, that is Brian. I think in the town manager update, it says brain fog. So kind of funny, I kind of caught that here as I'm talking. Uh, we did move forward with him. And um, as you mentioned, we got the invoice for the first part of that payment. So obviously the process is moving forward. Uh, town meeting, uh, we had overall 956 ballots were cast. Uh, just under a hundred uh, came in person. I think the number was like 93, 94, somewhere in there. So I think that, um, uh, at the end of the day, um, having people or, or the mail out ballots and trying to keep people away from the public space worked. Uh, so we were very happy with that. It seemed to be a slow day in here, um, unfortunately for the justice of the peace. But, um, you know, from, from Brian and, and where I was, that was all a good thing and um, uh, fairly successful, I think. Uh, I mentioned the ADA access under COVID-19, but I do just want to, um, uh, I'm putting this in your head because the next couple of meetings are, are gonna be somewhat busy. Uh, we've got the public hearing for um, this grant at our next meeting. I do expect the planning commission hopefully to be passing on the town plan on Wednesday to the select board. Uh, for the town plan update. Uh, once that comes forward, we need to have two uh, public hearings at the select board level. Uh, the second one is basically, you know, an adoption, but um, uh, we do need to have two. So we're gonna have um, kind of some busy select board meetings in here in Mar uh, March 21st and then, uh, the first and second one may be April and May, or maybe we can do it back to back in April, but um, I'm, I'm not sure that we can do that. It'll be most likely April and May, but I certainly wanted to kind of give you a heads up of some of the things that we've got coming down the pike um, in addition to some of the administrative stuff that we've got. And also uh, after some of those things, we do have a class four uh, roads and legal trail policy that the conservation commission has been working on. Um, so we got that coming down the pike as well. So, um, you know, we got a couple of things to kind of sink our teeth into over the next two to three months. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to, you know, keep everybody abreast of what we've got coming down the pike. Sure. Um, Dave, uh, for the um, rec center and the ADA access, um, it's not clear to me what the meeting is about. Are, are we going to have uh, plans beforehand that we can review just to see what the scope is? Or is that the purpose of the meeting to present what the needs are and, and a potential solution to those needs? So that's what the grant's for. 
Uh, so uh, the grant is for a scoping study, which will hopefully tell us what the end result uh, will look like. So again, this is um, keeping it a little bit more simplistic um, than uh, that even, Phil. It's just a matter of, you know, look, we are going out and getting a grant. This is what the grant's for. This is, you know, about what the expense will be of the grant. This is what we're, you know, hope to do with the grant, which is to, um, you know, look at, um, you know, have an architect or an engineer look at the building and, and come up with some alternatives as to how we can, you know, make that handicapped accessible. Okay. Sure. Uh, and possibly even look at some of the drainage issues. Um, you know, so it's, it's more of a public hearing that look, we're going out and getting this grant for this process. We will not have any kind of plans or grand, you know, grand okay. answers for another year and a half, two years. And am I right to say or recall that Two Rivers is shepherding this with us? Okay. We are getting assistance from Two Rivers. Um, unfortunately, Tory Littlefield is leaving Two Rivers. Uh, so we got a little bit of, um, um, uh, you know, a little bit of a transition here. But I expect to see Mr. Kevin Geiger uh, at, with us on the 21st. Um, so he's um, been at Two Rivers forever. And uh, we may even see uh, another person from Two Rivers, Stephen Bauer, who's fairly new with them, um, but um, very good guy. So um, they will be here to talk about the grant process. They are submitting the grant for us. So um, yeah, we got some assistance from, from Mr. Gregory on this. Good to see. Right. So um, this has been in the works for a little bit. Yeah. You may... Uh, not recall, but, um, you know, so they've taken some of the funding, uh, kind of hard to believe, even with all the ARPA money kicking around at the state level, but um, they've taken, they've kind of robbed from this pool of grant money, um, you know, this grant money, which is for handicapped access, and they've funneled some of that to housing. So unfortunately, um, this process is more competitive than usual and is kind of a competitive process. So just want to give everybody a heads up that it is competitive. It's not a slam dunk. Um, you know, they were supposed to have a, for lack of a better term, grant offering uh, right about now. And they had to cancel it because of, um, you know, they had taken some of that funding and given it to housing. So they didn't have it for the ADA access, but we will go through that process in June. Uh, the gentleman that is involved in the grant, um, uh, uh, trying to think of the word, from the state of Vermont that um, awards the grants, um, is familiar with this building, is familiar with Heartland, thinks it's a good project. That's good to hear. But again, it's it's gotten competitive, and um, you know, hopefully, we'll they'll see the merits, and we can do what we need to do. Okay. Uh, anything else, Dave, on the manager notes? Yeah, just again um, for Jim, Mandy, and um, Clyde. You know, number seven, miscellaneous. Um, most of the time, as a reminder, I kind of put the things that. Um, uh, one, a lot of the things are right presently in front of me, like the three corners intersection, uh, the ADA access to the rec building, um, the, the flooring to the activity center. Um, and we have problems over there because it, the floor is painted. And, um, you know, anytime you've got child care um, facility, uh, you know, every time you have chip paint, you need to address it. <coughs> We've addressed a lot of the issues over the activity center, but we are looking to put in uh, a flooring over there, whether it be tile floor or maybe, um, you know, kind of the carpeting that comes in squares that kind of fits together. Something to put over that so that we're not continuously kind of battling the, the chips, uh, the paint chips there. 
Uh, we do get some flooding at the activity center, so we can't be too extravagant. Uh, we need to be able to clean it up, whether it be a shop vac or a mop. But um, that's also, um, I'd like to try and finish that or get that done by the end of the year. And then from there, you see some uh, medium term and long term projects. And I keep those in front of you as kind of a reminder of uh, the items that we've got coming down the pike. Some of those have been in here since for four, four and a half, five years. Uh, you know, but uh, again, these are things that um, are important and um, vital and need to be done. And I kind of keep them in front of you. And, most of the time um, they're on here is just kind of a reminder. <clears throat> One last thing, uh, Phil, I will uh, mention, we have decided, actually I have decided the walking path to the rec center, we're gonna put off again this year to next year. Um, just with the amount that we've got going on with the three corners intersection and some of our other road projects, um, just felt as though it was going to be difficult to kind of um, see that through and have uh, trucks going in and out of the library. If there was also construction going on at the three corners intersection, uh, this is not gonna go away. We've got the money kind of earmarked for it uh, in the reserve funds. Um, so we uh, hope to pick that up put the RFP out next winter and, and see that through. Okay, that, that's great news because I know that's uh, many, many people in town use that, that area. So, um, good. Okay, then any questions for Dave? If not, we'll go on to correspondence. Okay. So I'd like to make a correction to what I said earlier when we covered uh, the correspondence. Uh, Dan did send his um, his speaking points from when he addressed us. So you know maybe we can consider a review of those speaking points and what his ask really is at, our, at one of our future meetings, put it on future agenda items. Okay, let's uh, certainly, uh, thank you for double checking that, Jim. And uh, mm -hmm. so to correct our statements before, then uh, right. yeah. Dan and Nicole have followed up with that correspondence. So, uh, okay, any other points before correspondence? Okay, uh, Dave received a, email <coughs> from a Norwich Select Board person who I am not quite sure if she was alerted before or after Jim Kenyon's article, which someone just called me, uh, Tom White just called me at 10 minutes to five and said, have I read that? And, and I wasn't here for the weekend. And so I grabbed Sunday's paper and read it. So the issue is um, the Mayor Campbell request, nothing to do with the functionality of those requests. It has to do with our method of discussing the request from and the requestor uh, and wanting to do that in a private setting. Um, as uh, people know, um, this fund predates us here. Um, and the Hartland Select Boards have been managing this um, for quite, a, quite some time. Um, and uh, um, Claudette in her uh, email suggests a, a way, a workaround to, um, since we been told by the state that legally, uh, we cannot go into executive session to have this discussion or a deliberative session. <clears throat> Um, and I think um, it's important, personally, I feel it's very important to protect the privacy of the uh, requester. Um, um, so tonight, I, I, you know, we have correspondence and um, we have a Valley News article. Um, and I happen to, totally aside from those two sources, I talked to a friend who's 
I forget it's either in Cornish and Plainfield <clears throat> and, and had discussed the dilemma, dilemma we had. And they had yet another method where they solved this very same thing. So um, if I, I don't know if we can take an action under correspondence or just open a discussion for possible um, solutions. Um, and of course, one solution may be to re-appeal to our state representatives to go to the Secretary of State to say, uh, can we change this? Um, so I'll pause and just ask for others' reactions, and then we really just need to be careful about what we can do tonight other than discuss it. Yeah, well, I'll just, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I, I'll defer a day for a minute. If we really want to take action on this, do we have to put it on a future agenda? Uh, yeah, you should. Yeah. So I mean, per personally, I think we can do this in a, in a de-identified way. Um, you know exactly what process we use. You know we can certainly talk about that in a future meeting and vote on it, take an mm -hmm. action on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, were you su suggesting that the um, the correspondence from Claudette, to, without my glasses, I can't for show maybe um, that we we take that route or we just well, I, I mean, I think you know. Out? Yeah, I mean, if we if we put it on the agenda for future discussion, I think we can we can discuss it if if warranted. We can ask for a public comment, and we can just make a decision on how we want to approach it as a select board. Okay. Yeah, but I, I think there must be an easy method here by which we can you know de-identify the requests and make decisions on them. Yeah, I I, I certainly agree with you, and and expect that. Um, we're not planning on doing away with Mayor Campbell fund, uh, but I think that's there are ways that we can we can we can do this. Um, ask one question: Is there any urgency, Dave? Do we have any current requests that need to be considered? Okay, so we have time. Okay, um, Clyde, I'm sure you're aware, but Mandy uh, and Jim, uh, Jim, you've been around for one request, um, um, but a, a request may come in. Um, through various channels, but ultimately possibly to the chair or to, to the town manager um, with a short letter uh, describing what the need is. Um, Dave traditionally does um, a bit of research, just checking what the need is and also checking to see um, if it's a fuel since and maybe, uh, maybe they qualify for you know, fuel from other sources. Um, uh, and then, uh, the request would be brought to the board uh, and we would go into this semi-quiet session to discuss um, the request. Um, in the past, um, uh, volunteer select board members have visited the, the requester to further verify and understand what's going on. Um, in addition, we've often, um, we spent a lot of time discussing that um, some of these requests uh, are, we began to feel that the requester might be back in two months asking for the same amount of money that there really were in a hole and how were they going to get out? So we were coming up with the idea of identifying a case manager that could help with the request um, and identify other, the many other resources that might be available in the Upper Valley. So um, so here we are um, and, and um, we will get it on an agenda um, and certainly before, hopefully before another request comes in the door. Um, okay. So, uh, Phil, I just um, remembered that we didn't um, identify a board spokesperson, with, which I think is traditionally the chair. So anyone, you know, if, if anyone's contacted by the media for an opinion or quote or comment, they need to defer and say that that uh, media person should contact the chair. Okay. Um, or folks, I think that's, I mean, that's also part of the statute and, and that the, the chair is the supposed spokesperson for the board. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying that. As Mary, you were quoted in the article um, in, in the Valley News. So um, good. 
Okay, well, um, I, I want to just, um, before asking for adjournment, just say thank you uh, for your vote of confidence to, to be the chair. Um, I will work to be effective, but I can only be effective if I get the help of all, all of you, and, and I know I will, uh, and I look forward to working with, um, with new members and old members, and even you, Dave, I'm working with you as well, too. I look forward to that. Um, so with that said, um, eyeing the time and saying, wow, before anything else comes up, can I have a motion to adjourn? Do a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mandy. I don't even think we need a second on that one. We just get out the door, right, Clyde? Well, yeah, you don't have to have a second on adjourn. No. Okay. Uh, Dave, anything else? Okay. Oh, I did have one question. Mandy, can you make it to Damon Hall during office hours to sign those documents? Yes, I can. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Good. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Okay. Thank right. you. Okay.